it's just these two stories put into short films and held together by this thread of the idea of the heroin addict brother telling these stories to his sister. And the first one's about some kind of uh, schizophrenic, love-obsessed guy going around, seems like a precursor to Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, wearing a white raincoat or trench coat and slaughtering the shit out of everybody he comes across and <laughs> while also being a somewhat a suave guy he did say to that one lady that he wanted her to absorb his love juice and that no. really stood out to me i wondered how that would work for myself so i started just texting people i don't know very well and asking them what if i told you i want you to absorb my love juice oh. they haven't gotten back to me yet so i don't really know what the consensus <laughs> is on that but i thought it was seemed like pretty effective effective line. you got a couple of restraining orders coming your way <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just, just experimenting you used to be able to do these not now yeah yeah but i i don't even know how that story resolved itself i was just uh amused by watching the fingers get chopped off the limbs get chopped off you drove a steak knife through somebody's head or was it a bread knife i don't even remember lit somebody on fire in a bathtub, was just going on this wild killing spree. And then I think he did find love by the end, but I don't I don't quite remember. We somehow moved into the second story where a priest was uh, out raping and killing, and then he started sermonizing to one of his victims, and then they cut to him delivering the same sermon in church. And of course, it converts over to him uh, doing satanic rituals with candles and pentagrams and conjuring demons. And that turns into a real gore fest. A demon comes along and writes 666 and blood on the wall. And uh, mm -hmm. for the final climax, uh, the chains are wrapped around the priest and pull him in half. And I got to say, you know, even, even though I could say that these weren't entirely convincing special effects, it was also another one of these shot on video uh, types of labors of love where you could see they really put a lot of canned tomatoes in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, sausage casings into this, into this project. <laughs> and I, I felt it worked out pretty well. Some people really seemed to think it dragged. By the time that one was over, people were commenting about how they felt like we'd been watching it for five hours. I didn't get that. I also saw reviews online where people were saying that it really dragged in parts and had issues there. And even some reviews suggesting that you cut to the last 15 minutes just to see all the gore. But I think you'd really be losing something if you did that, because I think you have to have that setup of seeing the poor acting, uh, the kind of scenarios that are being set up kind of ineptly and in order to appreciate the full scope of the film. And I looked up the uh, the director. It's uh, Olaf Ittenbach, and he has a lot of films. The last one is called Garden of Love Two from 2017. But even finding that film, it was very difficult mm -hmm. to find a synopsis of it. And I don't even think I managed to. <laughs> and his most popular film is Burning Moon, and he apparently directed that at the age of 23. So that's pretty impressive, I think. It is. 